Bees have been much in the news of late, and for the saddest of reasons, due to habitat loss, global warming, pesticides and monocrop agriculture. Their numbers are in sharp decline across the United States and the world at large. The loss of bees and other threatened pollinators could damage not only the world's economy, but also endanger its very ecosystem. Bees are a hidden treasure. From alpine meadows in the National Forest of the Rocky Mountains, to the Sonoran Desert in the Coronado National Forest in Arizona, and from the Boreal Forest of the Tongass National Forest in Alaska, to the Ocala National Forest in Florida, bees can be found anywhere in the world, where flowers bloom. Welcome to James Sword Channel. In this video, we shall be considering the similarities and differences between two of the most common varieties, the bumblebee and the honeybee. Please do well to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video, and click on the notification bell for update on content. But not all bees are created equal, there are nearly 20,000 no species, differing widely in physical characteristic, pollination habits, behaviors and habitat. And although, we can't be familiar with all of them, we can take a first step by considering two of the most common varieties. Most people do not realize that there were no honeybees in America, before European settlers brought hives from Europe. These resourceful animals promptly managed to escape from domestication, as they had done for millennial in Europe and Asia. Honeybees formed swarms and set up nests in hollow trees. Other pollinators, especially bees other than honeybees, have been pollinating the continent's flowering plants since long before the arrival of honeybees. The honeybee, remarkable as it is, does not know how to pollinate tomato or eggplant flowers. It does very poorly compared to other bees, when pollinating some plants such as pumpkins, cherries, blueberries and cranberries. Let's take a look at the similarities between the bumblebee and the honeybees. The various bumblebee and honeybee species belong to the Apidae family. Unlike most bees, the bumblebees and the honeybees are social insects that live in colonies. Bumblebee and honeybees both have pollen baskets called carbicillae on their hands legs. In honeybees and bumblebee, the tibial segment of the hind leg is flattened with rows of long, strong hairs along the edges. The shape of these baskets allows them to pack pollen mixed with some nectar and saliva into a tight mass called a corbicolor pellet. Rather than the loose mass of pollen grain, clinging to the hairs of the scopi of other bee species. The differences. The bumblebee has fat, round and furry appearance, while the honeybee has a thin, smaller and slim appearance. The bumblebees are native to eastern North America, while the honeybees are native to Europe. Bumblebees are all of one piece, while honeybees have a clear distinction between head and abdomen. Bumblebees do not form swarms, while honeybees form swarms. The bumblebees lives in nest with up to a few hundred fellow bees. The nests are found exclusively in the wild, and can often be found in the burrows or holes in the ground. Honeybees build and lives in hives with ten of thousands of their brethren. These hives can either be domesticated colonies kept by beekeepers, or wild ones found in hollow trees. Bumblebees can stick multiple times, and they only sting when they are touched or their nest is disturbed. While honeybees can only sting once before dying. All the bumblebees except the queen dies before the start of winter. The queen hibernates underground, therefore, their lifespan is short, around one year. While the honeybee's queen and many of its daughters live in the hive all year round. Their long-lived colonies survived the winter intact. The queen in fact can live for some three to four years. Bumblebee produce little honey for self-consumption. While honeybees produce large quantities of honey, which can be harvested for human consumptions. Bumblebee are more effective pollinators, cover more area and they are able to buzz pollinate. They're so effective at pollinating tomatoes, that their buzz pollination services, are put to good use in large greenhouse that grow tomatoes year round. While honeybees are less effective pollinators, tend to stick to the same area. It doesn't know how to pollinate tomatoes or eggplant flowers. Honeybees does very poorly compared to bumblebees, when pollinating plants such as pumpkin cherries etc. In conclusion, helping native bees is essential to our continued survival, health and well-being. The bee benefits us all because of their invaluable ecosystem services, they provide to the environment and to our farms, forest and gardens. Not only do they pollinate most of our flowering plants, their bodies feed other wildlife and their ground nesting behaviors aerate and enrich soils. They enrich and sustain our lives. 
The good news is that all of us particularly wildlife gardeners can help bumblebee in and around our own homes. Here are some important steps you can take. Provides pollen and nectar for food. Ensure bumblebees have nesting sites. Protect hibernation habitat. Eliminate pesticides. Help scientists study bumblebee. The observation of bumblebee can become a lifelong pastime and pleasure. Become involved.